Pardon me, Steve Sabadowski, publisher of BayouBuzz.com. And uh, this morning, uh, we're talking to Tyler Bridges. Uh, Tyler has uh, written a book, Rise and Fall of David Duke. And uh, we certainly would like for you to uh, provide input, uh, questions, comments, etc. cetera. Uh, this is being streamed on Facebook and on Twitter and Periscope. Uh, good morning, Tyler, how are you doing today? Good morning, Steve. Thank you so much. Uh, now, many years ago, uh, uh, 1994, I read your first book, The Rise of uh, David Duke. And so now you have the rise and fall of David Duke uh, only about 24 years later, right? My math, I think, is right. So uh, what prompted you to uh, what prompted you to write both? Well, the original book um, was a product of my coverage with the Times-Picayune I began working for the Times Picayune in January of 1989, and the following month, David Duke surprised people by getting elected to the state legislature from Metairie. And I think, Steve, you remember those times. Sure. And uh, Duke made a name for himself in the legislature with his uh, racially charged uh, uh, comments and legislation that he sponsored. And then, as you'll remember, he ran for the Senate in 1990. Um, and won over half the white vote in losing to the incumbent Bennett Johnson. And again, you lived through this, uh, the race in 1991 for governor. Uh, the primary, he knocked out uh, Buddy Romer, the incumbent, and uh, faced off against Edwin Edwards in an election that became national news. And I was the lead reporter, and I knew more about David Duke than anyone else. I had investigated him very thoroughly and wrote a lot of stories uh, 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 for the Times Picayune newspaper about him. And then uh, Duke chose to run for president in 92, which was a mistake on his part politically. And I followed him on that as well. And, uh, and then so I thought, well, let me write a book about this guy. Because so often uh, it was frustrating to me at uh, how, how many media accounts were wrong and how often Duke was able to manipulate reporters who had not done their homework. So the University Press published the initial book, The Rise of David Duke, in 1994. So I went off and covered other things. Um, I moved to Florida. I moved to South America. And um, Duke ran a couple more times for office in Louisiana. But I stopped covering him. And then uh, I really had not thought very much about David Duke over the years. And then in 2016, he reappeared really because he endorsed Donald Trump for president early on right. at a time when a lot of people were still shying away from him. And when a reporter, not me, discovered that uh, Duke had endorsed Trump and wrote a story about it, that became news. And then it became even more news when Trump initially uh, did not disavow Duke. And so, uh, and then Duke made headlines uh, uh, when he was at the white supremacist march and riot in Charlottesville uh, in 2017. So I thought it would be a really good idea since people were writing a bit again about David Duke to update readers on exactly who he is. So the, the book that you have now, uh, The Rise and Fall of David Duke, um, is it a combination of the first book and a second, second book? So if you fail to read the first book, then that information is all in the second book or is it just the update? Yeah, so the rise and fall of David Duke, uh, which I've just published, is the original book, which had mm -hmm. 10 chapters, same footnotes, same photographs, same, same text with four new chapters. Okay. And it covers basically Duke from 1994 through, uh, through up till now. And uh, so it's a, again, it's a combination of the original book and the new material that I have researched and written. Okay, you know, yesterday I, I posted on Facebook uh, about our event this morning, and a friend of mine said, uh, "Well, who who cares?" And uh, you know, saying that only liberals care because otherwise, you know, David Duke would be irrelevant and uh, I understand exactly you know why that person said that um, so let me just pose it to you uh, I, I, I personally think it's history and so we need to uh, read and understand history just like the, the Confederate monuments we need to 
be aware of that. So, I mean, in, in your opinion, I mean, how, how would you respond to somebody who says, who cares? Well, obviously, a lot of people care because David Duke is constantly in the news. In 2016, as I mentioned, it, it was big news when he endorsed Donald Trump and then when Donald Trump did not disavow him and then when Trump did finally disavow Duke, that made for more news. Mm -hmm. And uh, that white supremacist march in Charlottesville got huge coverage, uh, not only in the country, but uh, abroad as well. And David Duke has shown that he still um, is newsworthy. Um, recently, um, I don't know if you saw the movie, I did, Black Klansman. Uh, the fact that um, the movie was based on a book uh, and uh, the, 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 there was tons of news stories about the, the actor who portrayed David Duke in the movie. Um, so David Duke is, it's not just history. There's a lot of, he is mostly history at this point, but he's still making news. He's still a present figure and also raises questions with the rise of what's called the alt-right. And Duke is one of the leaders of what is now called the alt-right and extremist right. Um, the Klan, the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, uh, these folks are still making news today. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, there's no question, especially given the fact that the president has declared himself a nationalist. And uh, I, I'm, did you check to see whether or not any responses from anybody in all right or David Duke uh, respond to that? Respond to what? To the president's uh, describing himself as a nationalist. I'm not aware of that, that specific okay. thing, but... Uh... Again, Duke is making news uh, uh, when he will say something. He, the recently, he, he made some favorable comments about the extremist right uh, political candidate in Brazil who looks like he's going to be the next president of Brazil. The New York Times wrote a story about that. It was written about in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, so again, um, Duke, because he is regarded as the leading racist in this country, uh, when he will say certain things the media will write about it and again i thought it was important mm -hmm. for people to understand exactly who this guy is you know from you you know i don't know if your people watching this know this but steve you did a lot of spade work back in the day uh, along with others to oppose duke to try to expose him and and i was doing my job and trying to write about him to mm -hmm. help people better understand then who he was as, uh, as a political candidate and now in a more historical way, but also an up-to-date because, again, he still makes news. Yep, uh, it was uh, certainly uh, an experience. Let's see, uh, Tim Allen Matthews says, I'm in the same boat. Why make this guy relevant? It's a history book or a political book. Um, so, you know, it's out there, uh, you know, in terms of, hey, you know, why even talk, why even mention his name? Um, so well, let me let me yeah, just jump in. Sure, on the absolutely. Yeah. On the historical question. So it was back in 1990, 1991, not too long ago, that this guy won over half the white vote when he ran first the Senate and then for governor. And even earlier, when Duke was in the Klan, when he was a Klan Grand Wizard, he was pushing issues, uh, particularly against uh, affirmative action, minority set asides quotas against illegal immigration, very racially charged issues. And, and Donald Trump is doing the same thing today. You know, you want to understand what's going on today. You know, that's what the benefit of history is, is to, is to write about history, what happened before, so people can understand it and make connections and better understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it seems to me, like I said, uh, you know, I mean, to me, that's why I support keeping up the monuments because um, historical uh, education. You know, if you don't understand what history is, then you're just going to repeat the same issues. So, let's move on. Um, in terms of David Duke, uh, he had a mentor uh, early on, and wouldn't you say? I mean, uh, I forget the guy's name, but that's how he kind of got into where he is now, isn't that? Am I, am I correct about that? I, I, I never completely figured out okay. why David Duke became obsessed with race, obsessed with Jews. 
but he did have a mentor who, who when he was you know, already beginning to form those, he was a guy named Jim Lindsay, who was, uh, I think it's fair to say he was a racist uh, guy. Um, and uh, this was Duke when Duke, when his was really about late, uh, maybe 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. And uh, Jim Lindsay ended up being murdered. Nothing related to David Duke. Um, but uh, from a young age, David Duke, again, has been fascinated with, with uh, the idea that the white race is the pure race, that it's, it's responsible for all the beauty and advances in society, and it, that it's very important that white people uh, keep separate from black people, from brown people. And Duke believes of, their, of white people really prefer to be with whites, and blacks prefer to be with blacks, and, and Hispanics prefer to be with, with Hispanics, but it's that the Jews, who, through their control of the media and the government, in his mind, that brings uh, the races together, and that ends up to leading to uh, impurities because of uh, people getting together and making babies that are not just white. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, no question. Now, he had a homework assignment. If I recall correctly, he had a homework assignment, and that's what sort of spurred or at least prompted him to at least do some research. And I think that's how he connected with Lindsay. Uh, in, is, in my, I'm, I'm going back 24 yeah, he went, years. Yeah, he went. He went. Uh, he had this homework assignment, and 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 this was about the mid 60s. And you know, David Duke was born in 1950, so mm -hmm. he wanted to do some research. and went to a group called the White Citizens Council, which was basically the, the clan without sheets. Mm -hmm. And and he then found people that who were able to um, nourish his uh, budding racist views. What the, the weird thing about Duke is where he got the anti-Semitism from, that's harder to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously there was a lot of racism, particularly in the 1960s at a time of civil rights movement and integration efforts um, mm -hmm. in the South. Uh, how Duke became obsessed with Jews, and I think you know this, Steve, from your own research, that uh, uh, Duke's biggest concern, his true, true abiding obsessive interest is with Jews. It's not, mm -hmm. it, it, he thinks that that is really the, the, the terrible influence, not, not black people. Right, right, right. Uh, no question about that. Now, uh, moving forward, 1994, uh, 2000, et cetera, uh, tell us about, tell us about uh, what readers can can read once they get your book rise and fall yeah, of David so, Duke. yeah so again when you and other people were at the barricades trying to uh, fight against Duke during his political heyday and again in those elections where half the white people in, in Louisiana voted for him uh, he he did never use the n-word he stopped talking about mm -hmm. his uh, Jews he talked about his concern for high taxes uh, illegal immigration Minority set-asides were bad, affirmative action was bad, mm -hmm. quotas were bad, and he really touched a, a, a nerve in the state of Louisiana, even across the country with frustrated mm -hmm. whites. And again, that's the point I make that, that uh, Donald Trump is doing that today. And it was after Duke lost the race for president, he, I mean, he barely got any support. He then was willing to then go back to uh, his true passion, uh, trying to, in his mind, expose the influence of Jews. So we see then Duke going back to his real roots in the 1990s and then in the years since then, even while he ran he ran for office a couple more times in Louisiana, he lost a race for the Senate and he left, mm -hmm. lost a race for Congress. But really, um, uh, since about 1993, 94, uh, if you listen to him, he has a podcast that mm -hmm. your viewers could, could listen to. Um, uh, internet radio, you'll hear him mostly talk about Jews. If you go to his website, mm -hmm. it's mostly about Jews. And again, right. I wanted to bring readers up to speed on exactly who this guy is because he continues to make news. And um, again, him and Trump, I think, is, an, is a, something people have, need to have a better understanding of. So um, he went to jail, and then after that, he, he, he went to Russia and he became a quote professor. And then after that, he went to Iran, and he gave a speech uh, with the president of Iran at the time. Am I correct? That is is that covered in the book? Yeah. Well, Duke did indeed plead guilty. 
He wasn't convicted. He pled guilty to basically stealing money from his mm -hmm. followers. And one of the things I thought it was important is that people remember that. And, and in the book, I explain, I lay out in his own words what he agreed to that he had done. Now, he will today say that he did not, he wasn't guilty, that he did that simply because he could not get a fair trial. And I show in the book why that, that was not, a, it's not an accurate statement on his part. But then after he got out, he decided to try to build more of an, uh, a worldwide movement. Duke has always been wanting to spread the gospel um, internationally. So as you, he did spend time in Russia. He spent time in, uh, in Iran, uh, Italy, Austria. Mm -hmm. uh, he found various white nationalists, particularly in Russia, who were sympathetic. Uh, his writings have been republished uh, in other languages. And then he got this doctorate uh, from this university in, uh, I think it's Ukraine. Did they teach in English uh, or Russian? Uh, I'm just wondering how in the world. I mean, he's, yeah, I think, he, he's a he smart guy, a very smart guy. And but he is a very smart yeah, guy. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I think that's important. And that's one of the things that I talk about in the rise and fall of David Duke is how intelligent he is. You know, he, he, uh, there have been a lot of extremists, clan members that wanted to gain a big name for themselves. Duke is the guy that succeeded mm -hmm. and that requires a lot of intelligence cleverness and ability to manipulate the media mm -hmm. yeah yeah no, no no question about that so uh i know that you got to run but let me just uh ask you a couple more questions and that is that what should the reader in in reading the book take away from the last four chapters in terms of david duke I think the key issue again is is it's his his true deep obsession is not with African Americans it's with Jews and 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 I bring that again to the fore in showing how that is really what motivates him and also allow me to say the Steve the the rise and fall of David Duke is not available in bookstores it's available through Amazon.com I decided to publish the, the updated version of the book myself. So people would uh, just go to Amazon and plug in my name and David Duke, The Rise and Fall of David Duke. It's, it's a print-on-demand book. So if people want to get it, uh, they can get it through uh, Amazon. Oh, how about that? How about that? Okay, so <clears throat> we'll put the link up and people can go there. And, and, uh, and so, so they would download the book or is... No, is, they would just simply order it. They'll order it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can, it can arrive in they two days. They have to print it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, right. Right. It, it right. can arrive in two days if you got Amazon Prime. Sure. A absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anything that uh, that I haven't asked you that you think is, you know, that, that the listeners and watchers should know about? Yeah, one question that comes up is that because Duke has been in the news a lot in the last couple of years, people mm -hmm. would be surprised that I'm calling the book The Rise and Fall of David Duke. Don't they say, hey, you know, isn't he rising? And and as you know, Steve, Duke ran for the Senate from Louisiana in 2016. He barely campaigned. He barely raised any money. And that was a far cry from his heyday back in 1990 and 1991. Uh, I went to a lot of rallies of his across mm -hmm. the state. He drew big, adoring crowds. Absolutely. You know, people would chant his name. They would give him cash for his campaign. Uh, he would fill rooms across the state. And again, he got half the white votes in Louisiana. Uh, he, he, in 2016, as I mentioned, he barely raised any money. He didn't campaign really other than going to gun shows on weekends. And he got 3% of the vote. That's why I say it's the rise and fall of David Duke, and I, I lay that out in the book. So if he were able to campaign and raise money, then maybe he would, he would do better. Or but he can't do, he can't he can't. do that anymore. He's too toxic. He, People were willing to support him before. They are not willing to publicly support him anymore. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, the Republican Party, in all due respect, they absolutely came out. Uh, back in the 90s with George Bush and Nungesser, uh, and, uh, and then again uh, in, two, in 2000 and uh, what, 16? Uh, I mean, they, they came the out. The National Republican Party back in 1990, you know, in Duke's rise, you'll remember, Steve, they did repudiate him. The state Re Republican Absolutely. Party did not because he was saying things that, that 
their 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 members supported. But 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 Billy Nungesser Senior, if I recall, I remember you know having a lot of conversations with him. He he didn't he didn't come out and repudiate him. He was critical of Duke, but okay. The state party did not take the steps that the national party did, that, that George okay. Bush and, and Lee Atwater and President Reagan did. Because again, you know, closer to the ground, uh, Duke was saying so many things that the members of, you know, ordinary voters in Louisiana agreed to. And we saw that in those elections. I can't wait to read the book and we'll put up some links and uh, uh, put up some banners and stuff like that. So listen, I really thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. if I could jump in, I'll be and sure. I'm gonna be at Octavia Book. Right, books in New Orleans um, Thursday night at 6 p.m. Um, talk about the book. I'll be with Larry Powell, who you know, Professor of Tulane, mm -hmm. who's a terrific writer and thinker, and he wrote a book on a uh, on a woman who confronted Duke in the state capitol, a woman named Ann Levy. Right. Uh, so I, I know Larry and I will have an interesting discussion, and if people can't make that, um, but our